Hang on, hello? Hey, are you there? Wake up. Wake up. Well, it's no secret that I've been making tons of videos about gaming monitors on the channel, tons of playlists over the last three months. I don't think I've done anything else besides gaming monitor videos. And I don't plan on stopping for those of you who watch because I know you like them. But I have been getting tons of questions about specific technologies, features within these monitors, and I wanted to address a few that I think are something to steer clear of, something you want to avoid by all means or not use if you found a monitor or bought a monitor that features these technologies and there's five of them. So we're about to jump right into it right now. So we're gonna dive right into it. But just for those of you who don't know, we have a great channel that has tons of monitor videos. So I break it down into playlists for you guys to check out. One really big long playlist that has every monitor review I've ever done. And then I've broken it down even more into some different subsets. So find one of those playlists, check it out, watch that. Doesn't really matter which order it is. I've got it all laid out on the channel for you. So without further ado, let's get into it. I do have a question that came up many times and it is related to the type of panel that monitors have uh, and I've been kind of getting some bad feedback from people about VA panels this isn't about VA panels it is about TN twisted pneumatic panels the reason I bring this up is because a lot of people have been asking and saying VA is terrible and I actually have Gunner here Gunner void zoo on YouTube uh, that I'm gonna bring on in a second we're gonna get his opinion on VA and TN obviously the gold standard for most is IPS in plane switching the one thing that I want to mention in my first technology to avoid is TN so one of the very first monitors I reviewed was this HP 25X. In fact, it was the first monitor I reviewed on the channel and it's a TN panel and it's a cheap, low budget 1080p, 144 hertz, one millisecond response rate monitor. And it's fantastic because it was really cheap, $179 and it has a lot of technologies built into it. But as the evolution of monitors have progressed, other types of panels have become less expensive. At the time, IPS was very hard to find a higher uh, performance IPS for a low cost. But now you can find IPS, in fact, you have one sitting right over here, that's a 280 hertz HDR monitor for 399. Yeah, it's only 1080p, but two, three, four years ago, that wasn't the case. So the argument used to be that TN was inexpensive and extremely good with motion blur and motion handling response rate. That's just not really the case anymore. Not to mention one of the biggest downsides with this monitor and the best features about it was the fact that it can flip to a portrait uh, mode. And in that portrait mode, it washes out all color. I mean, you get this green haze over the display and you can't really make out all your text when you use it that way. But don't take my word for it. I have Gunner, once again, Void Zoo from YouTube. And hey, Gunner, I want to ask your opinion, man. What do you think? Is TN just outdated and uh, you shouldn't be buying it anymore? Is VA better? And uh, is IPS low enough cost to be able to just say TN, let's throw it out the window. Hey, Travis, thanks for having me on. So as for if TN is outdated and if you should be buying it, I'd say for the most part, yes. For a long time, ultra high refresh rate monitors such as 240 Hertz and above were exclusively found on TN panels. Nowadays, that's just simply not the case. If we look at some of the highest refresh rate monitors on available on the market, the Acer Nitro XV252Q, which is the highest refresh rate monitor available to the consumers, which is 390 Hertz, that monitor is actually using an IPS panel. Granted, it is around $700, I believe, but you can actually find 1080 p 240 hertz ips monitors such as the pixio px279 for as low as 280 dollars now for va being better than tn is a slightly more complex difficult question than the last so tn panels are known for having really fast pixel response times at a much lower cost leading to having far less ghosting. The thing with VA panels though, is that they suffer from something called black smearing. So this is where the black 
dark images on a screen despite being very rich in contrast and being very deep blacks somewhat similar to an oled but obviously the pixels are still on so it's not an oled they have issues when motion is introduced causing severe smearing and ghosting and i can put a video up on the screen essentially it can smear the black part of an image making it harder to read or to discern what's going on this problem does change in severity depending on the quality of the panel there are exceptions to this rule, such as the Samsung Odyssey G7, which actually has the fastest response time of any monitor in the market. VA IPS TN, the G7, in fact, was ranked as the highest response time for pixels and therefore has virtually no ghosting, yet it's still able to be a VA panel. That being said, this monitor is often out of stock and a whopping $750 retail, which is far more expensive than the average VA panel. In short, VA panels get very good the more you you pay but on the low end especially for fps games i choose an ips over a va if it's in your budget you may be wondering why would people choose va then well the main reason to go with va is because there is actually zero monitors on the market using a 16 by 9 aspect ratio and being curved so if you're looking for something like a 32 inch curved 1440p high refresh rate monitor you're gonna have to settle with va and generally the lower cost options in that bracket will have a decent amount of ghosting uh, another big reason va is extremely popular is the black levels are the deepest they have the highest contrast ratio of any monitor on the market and so you're getting closer to an oled level performance however in some cases you can have something called black crushing which is essentially if you're looking at something that's gray but not black like almost black on on a VA, in often cases, it will just show as black. So VA is not going to be good for anyone doing content creation or any side of any type of professional work flow considering won't be able to accurately portray some colors if you primarily play story games va is an amazing 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 option now is ips low enough cost to disregard tn altogether this question is super easy i kind of answered it in my first one but yes there are some things to consider with all three monitor types and none of them are perfect in fact not a single monitor on the market besides maybe the samsung odyssey g7 is perfect however the g7 has had issues with flickering when using g-sync so there is something to think about as well. When we look at all three panel types, TN panels have the highest refresh rate for the lowest costs, but suffer from terrible viewing angles. VA panels have a wide range of pricing going from extremely cheap to very, very expensive. And they do have the best contrast of any monitor. And they do offer very unique variants, such as the curved 16 by nine aspect ratio I had mentioned earlier. However, they do suffer from black smearing and sometimes crushed blacks, as I mentioned before. Now, IPS panels have by far the best color reproduction and response times for the money and are often used by professional gamers along with creative professionals, but they have generally low contrast and something called IPS glow, which if you haven't seen it, it's it's kind of like you break the glass, so to speak. Once you notice it, it's ex extremely hard to not see. And it's basically where some of the corners on the monitor of an IPS, I'm looking at mine now and I can see it, is they will have a some sort of glow about it, almost like a light is shining out from the corners. It's not that noticeable in most day-to-day -day workflows. However, when it comes to dark scenes or letterboxing on a movie, it is extremely noticeable and very distracting. It makes the blacks occasionally look more gray than black, and it will distract you in, when playing something like a story game. Okay, this third one is not going to be popular, and I am gonna bring Gunner on uh, to talk about his experience here because I know he's been looking at high refresh rate monitors. And when I say high refresh rate, I don't mean like 144, 165, 180. I mean like 240 plus, 280 hertz, things like that, 360 hertz. Avoid at all costs high refresh rate monitors. There is a caveat to that. The caveat is if the game you're playing can actually receive 240 hertz plus from your graphics card, then yes, that's something you should be looking for because you have headroom. If you only have a 144 hertz monitor, 
you can bump it up to 240. So I'll give you a couple of downsides here and then I'll, I'll go to Gunner to get his opinion on this. The number one reason that I say not to do this is most games that people play, like the most common games outside of maybe CSGO, maybe Fortnite, and a few other like FPS style games, your graphics card is not going to give 240 hertz or even near that without eliminating the quality that you're paying for. If your goal is I'm gonna reduce all quality in the game to get the highest output in frames, get a 240 hertz monitor. But if that's not your goal, if you're not an esports player, if you're not in competition, in a clan somewhere, then you probably shouldn't be looking at these monitors. You're sacrificing quality for quantity. And a lot of the newest technologies like RTX, Fidelity FX, HDR performance is much better now than it was five years ago. And these displays are getting better at that as well. And I promise, uh, I, I'll be the first to say I'm not happy about that because I have a 3090. And playing on the specs that I wanna play on, on Warzone, I can't get anywhere near 240 hertz. I can maybe get about 170 uh, at good to, and I'm probably not ultra settings, but really good settings. Some of the high refresh rate monitors, whether it's 240 or 360 or anywhere in between, some of them are gonna be TN panels. So steer clear of those and be careful. Now, if you do run into an IPS panel, which are much better in my opinion, you wanna look for something like HDR, performance, you wanna look for other technologies that are actually gonna benefit you uh, in the long run. That way you can scale it down a bit if you want and still utilize HDR. But don't take my word for it. I mean, hey Gunner, does high refresh rate really make that big of a difference for you in the sense that you'll spend more and uh, you'll sacrifice quality? Do you feel like you have to sacrifice quality with these guys? Uh, what do you think, man? Okay, so I like this question because I actually play a lot of games on my PC, but as well as my Series X at 1440p, 120 hertz. So when playing games like Valorant or CSGO, games that aren't generally graphically advanced to begin with, I always drop my settings to the absolute lowest to squeeze every single frame out I can. The main reason being is with 240 hertz and above panels, if you can hit 240 FPS consistently in these games, you will get more enjoyment out of playing with an ultra high refresh rate than you would with ultra graphics because they just generally don't look that much better than the low settings options. Now, story-based games such as The Elder Scrolls or The Witcher or Cyberpunk hold most of the enjoyment from the immersion. This is most notable with higher fidelity graphics. You know, the better the game's looking, the more immersed you might feel, maybe the bigger the monitor. These kind of things all work together to kind of pull you in and make you feel like you're a part of the game. So having a higher refresh rate while being extremely nice is not nearly as important as having a higher fidelity. I mean, if you've watched gameplay of Cyberpunk at an ultra setting versus a low setting, it's drastically different the funny part is the FPS doesn't get that much better with it. So you're almost better off just trying to aim for 60 FPS. And I know if you've used 144 Hertz and above, it's hard to go back, but trust me, it is more enjoyable if you enjoy story games like that to have them locked with a higher fidelity. Now, as you said, Warzone is pretty badly optimized. However, for the Series X, I can hit a consistent 1440p, 120 FPS. So for me, it's enjoyable despite not having an FOV slider, for example. However, on PC, it can be hard to hit that resolution to frame rate without lowering loads of settings. So generally on my PC, I have to run it at normal to low settings on 1440p to actually get 120 to 144 FPS. I do play on a laptop, but that being said, I believe that a game like Warzone or Call of Duty in general is more enjoyable on console. The TLDR of this question really is if you play competitive esports titles or shooters mainly, ultra high refresh rate is absolutely worth it over fidelity. If you enjoy a mix of both, kind of like me, and you're on a budget, I definitely recommend something like a 1440p 144Hz IPS panel like the Acer Nitro XV272U for $280 and call it good. You're getting high resolution, high refresh rate, an IPS panel for $280. Something like that would be the greatest middle ground if you like enjoying a story rich game as well as playing an FPS game, not necessarily competitively. If you're more into story games and only want the best possible graphics, 
definitely go for a 4K 60 hertz monitor or 4K 120 hertz if you can afford it, given you have a Series S or X or a decent PC and roll into the sunset of immersion. Okay, so we have two more technologies that I would highly advise against if you're looking for a gaming monitor. But first, I wanna let you know that, hey, we have a fantastic channel built out for you. I mean, every day I'm going in and building out these playlists and making new content, trying to get as much info in these videos as possible for you so you can check them out, make a good buying decision, maybe learn something new on a product that you're looking at and uh, go check it out. It's on the homepage and while you're there or while you're watching this video, definitely hit uh, that subscribe button. That's what keeps us going here and uh, I absolutely want to keep going. So I appreciate you guys that have, let's jump into it. The fourth technology here is OLED, O-L-E-D stay away from it okay i shouldn't be that harsh i am i am the first to tell you that i will be that uh oled is fantastic for gaming but it, when it comes to gaming monitors we see this astronomical price i'm going to give one example and it's the 32 ep 950 from lg it's an oled panel 32 inches in size it's fantastic it has all their gaming features built into it however they want a four thousand dollars for this thing four thousand four that's insane that is just insane you guys that blows my mind away you can go buy a 48 49 inch oled from lg today with g-sync compatibility one millisecond response rate 120 hertz capable for a thousand bucks just keep in mind there are some drawbacks number one oled can can and I say can with a, a grain of salt here, they can experience burning. So the only thing I have to say is just be mindful because if you play a game that has like a Chiron on it or a mini map that's really bright or it has a headline that's like really bright, your gaming monitor, if it is OLED, will experience this. As much as OLED is fantastic, you know, I'd hate to see you guys experience burning on a $4,000 monitor. So just avoid it. At least if it's a monitor and it's not a TV, like a TV you could probably dual use and you're not always playing games on. So, you know, I, I bet a few of the haters probably clicked off this video and they're like, this guy has no idea what he's talking about. Or they went down below in the comments and they're like, you're so wrong about OLED. You know, I have to tell you that every video that I make, there's always somebody who feels differently. And I fully understand. I'm saying just like I did with 280 Hertz that we maybe need a little more time, a little more time for this technology to develop for what it's intended for. And we're getting there. It's very, very close on some of these topics. But my next topic is something that is not so close. And I've tested it. I have to tell you, if you see these two things on feature lists for your monitor, do not believe them or believe that they're gonna help you out in any way. So first is ELMB extreme low motion blur the other is mprt motion picture response time now they're both technologies utilized quite differently but both technologies that help with motion blur and elmb helps with uh, 165 hertz like one millisecond response rate so i tested out elmb on the, it was like the asus tough vg it was the asus 32 inch uh tough gaming monitor that i reviewed probably about a month or two ago, and they had ELMB. It was supposed to be this fantastic technology at 165 hertz, one millisecond, just meshed those two technologies together and made them extremely smooth and easy to play and easy to game on when you have your settings maxed out. And I have to tell you, go check that video out. I'll put it down in the description below, but that ELMB, it really didn't give me any noticeable difference whatsoever. And in fact, I found better settings for motion capability at high refresh rate, just through regular variable refresh rate G-Sync technology. So the next technology is MPRT, motion picture response time. And this technology has actually been around for a while. So it helps produce less lag time between one picture showing and the next picture showing. So for example, the MSI Artemis 323 CQR monitor that I just reviewed, fantastic monitor by the way, go check out the full review on the page. I think it's a really good monitor. It has this MPRT 
And what it does is it actually turns off the capability of variable refresh rate and your ability to tune your pixel response rate. And that creates a huge problem uh, because that technology is now gone. It's being replaced with MPRT, which from my experience, really didn't add any value whatsoever. And uh, so I'm only saying this because just because a technology is given hype from a monitor manufacturer, from a gaming company, it doesn't mean that technology actually benefits you massively. It's kind of like when ray tracing first came out. First gen ray tracing kind of sucked. Now we're on to the RTX 30 series and it's fairly decent, it's very good actually. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt when you see these technologies and don't just buy in because it's all the hype. I've bought in, bought in on some of these technologies and learned the hard way. And that's why I made this video. I didn't want you guys to learn the hard way, but I do right before we leave, I wanna get to Gunner and I wanna ask him something because we gotta add a plus one here. So Gunner, what's one technology that I didn't mention that you've experienced like a poor performance for from, that you can warn these guys let them know like just avoid this technology when it comes to gaming monitors let them know man I'm, i want your insight here so for this one i actually had a lot of problems trying to find out one technology i really couldn't stand and and you actually hit the head on most of them however there is one big one that i definitely wanted to bring up on most spec sheets especially on amazon you will see things like one millisecond response time this is generally a catch-22 for most monitors as, for example, the LG Ultra Gear Nano IPS models, I have two of them, they can hit one millisecond response times using the faster response time preset in the OSD menu. However, this introduces a massive overshoot, ghosting, and among other issues making the picture during fast paced movements extremely lacking and unpleasant to the eye. Make sure to do extensive research on your panel you're looking at from sites like Blurbusters or Artings or channels like this one or Hardware Unboxed here on YouTube to accurately get the best response times with the lowest amount of ghosting and overshoot. The one millisecond gray to gray response times are in reference to the image, not the input delay. I'd also like to add technologies like ELMB Sync, Diac Plus, Backlight Strobing, and, and more other uh, technologies like that actually insert a black frame in between normal frames to lower the ghosting effect. So say you have 10 frames a second, one of those would be a black frame. For photosensitive people, this can actually give massive headaches as it is technically a strobing image, even if you can't see it. So if you ever watched, if you could, if you have Elon B Sync or something like that in your computer, you can film it with your phone. And if you turn it on, you will see it'll have a strobing effect to it. You can't see it in person. However, it does technically affect some people without really noticing it. Well, give Gunner some support here, you guys. Uh, once again, on YouTube, it is Void Zoo. He's actually linked in my recommended channels on the homepage. Go give him some support, subscribe to his channel. And if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, subscribe to this channel. I enjoy using game, different gaming monitors and the technologies behind them. Therefore, I share that with you uh, because I think there's value in learning about a product before you buy it. As always, you guys, that's the end of the video. And uh, I'll come back to you. I've got some good videos coming up, so stay tuned. Definitely subscribe, hit the notification bell because I have two new monitors coming in. The only hint I'll give you is they're both Acer Nitro and they both came out within the last three months and I've been getting asked about them on the channel. So just go hit that subscribe button wherever it's at and check out the homepage because those are gonna be up very, very soon. All right, you guys, I'll catch you in the next video.